The Middle Ages was shrouded in shadows and filled with unspeakable horrors. During this era, human fascination with torment reached its zenith and the depths of cruelty knew no bounds. However, within the confines of ancient Europe, a gallery of the deadliest devices ever devised emerged, crafting a sinister intent to unleash indescribable suffering upon their hapless victims. Among these devices, five devices stood out as the epitome of cruelty. Each one was meticulously designed out of the desire to extract information or confessions through ruthless and inhumane methods devoid of mercy or escape. Join us as we take a harrowing ride into the dark ages of history, peering into the shadowy realm of agony and uncovering the secrets of these five dreadfully cruel devices. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Iron Maiden In the mysterious depths of medieval Europe, tales of a dread-inducing device emerged, known as the Iron Maiden. This fearsome creation, shrouded in intrigue, captivated the imaginations of many. It was said to stand tall, an imposing presence capable of trapping a human being within its menacing embrace. Its form consisted of double doors at the front, concealing a vertical casket adorned with wickedly sharp spikes on the inner side. The existence of the Iron Maiden, initially dismissed as a mere figment of the imagination, became substantiated through the discovery of various documented accounts. According to Johann Philipp Sebenkis, an 18th century writer, the earliest recorded execution involving the Iron Maiden occurred on August 14, 1515. On that unfortunate day, a notorious counterfeiter found himself trapped in the clutches of this diabolical device. As the executioner slowly shut the doors, the sharp spikes mercilessly pierced the coin forger's arms, legs, belly, chest, bladder, genital area, eyes, shoulder, and buttocks. Although his injuries were severe, death did not come swiftly, and the counterfeiter endured agonizing pain for two tortuous days before finally succumbing to his wounds. However, legends have it that the Iron Maiden gained particular notoriety within the city of Nuremberg, where it was thought to have been first displayed around the year 1802. Unfortunately, the original Iron Maiden met a tragic fate, succumbing to the ravages of Allied bombing during the tumultuous year of 1945. Nonetheless, a copy crafted for public exhibition, purportedly originating from the Royal Castle of Nuremberg, found its way into the possession of the Earl of Shrewsbury in 1890, preserving at least a semblance of this eerie instrument. The Rack In 328 BC, a chilling event occurred, as chronicled in the historical account Arian wrote in his Anabasis of Alexander. It was when the great conqueror Alexander the Great found himself facing a treacherous plot hatched by his pages along with their mentor, the court historian Callisthenes. Thus, Alexander resorted to a sinister and deadly device known as the Rack to extract the truth and punish those involved. The Rack was a rectangular frame crafted with malevolent intent, mainly from wood, and elevated slightly above the ground. Sturdy rollers were placed at each end of the frame, serving as restraints for the victim's ankles and wrists. As the interrogation unfolded, a handle and ratchet mechanism attached to the upper roller was used to gradually tighten the chains, intensifying the strain on the prisoner's shoulders, knees, hips, and elbows, inflicting unbearable pain. Ingeniously devised pulleys and levers allowed the rollers to rotate independently, subjecting the victim's joints to such immense tension 
that dislocation and separation became inevitable. The muscles stretched beyond their limits and lost their ability to contract, rendering them useless. The sheer brutality of the rack was such that even if the victim's joints remained intact, they would be left maimed and in some cases paralyzed for the remainder of their days. According to legends, this tortuous device was introduced in England in 1420 by John Holland, the second Duke of Exeter, who served as the constable of the tower in 1447, earning it the haunting moniker of the Duke of the Exeter's daughter. However, over the centuries, modifications were made to the rack as it spread throughout Europe. In France, spikes were added to intensify the suffering inflicting upon the victims. In Russia, it functioned as a gallows-like apparatus called the Daiba. Victims would be suspended in the air and subjected to lashings from a whip known as the knout or even burned with searing torches, adding yet another layer of horror to their torment. As time marched forward, the rack continued its grim work claiming the lives of numerous unfortunate souls. Among them was Anne Askew, a young Protestant martyr and daughter of Sir William Askew, a knight of Lincolnshire. In 1546, at the tender age of 25, Anne faced the excruciating torment of the rack before her eventual execution. Accused by the bishop's chancellor of exceeding her rightful place as a woman by speaking the scriptures and by the Bishop of Winchester for refusing to accept the sacraments as the literal flesh, blood, and bone of Christ, Anne remained resolute in her beliefs until the end. The torture she endured was so severe that she had to be carried on a chair to the stake where she would meet her fiery demise. Another victim of the relentless rack was Nicholas Owen, a Catholic martyr renowned for his skill in constructing hiding places for priests known as priest holes. Unfortunately, in 1606, within the confines of the Tower of London, Owen faced the full extent of this gruesome device's brutality. The Scavenger's Daughter during the reign of King Henry VIII of England, Sir Leonard Skevington, the Lieutenant of the Tower of London, attempted to create a device as sinister and deadly as the rack. This chilling instrument of torture was named the Scavenger's Daughter or Skevington's Daughter. This device, also widely known by several other names such as Skevington's Gyves, Iron Shackle, and the Stork, reminiscent of the Italian word Cicogna or the Spanish A-frame was regarded as a legitimate means of extracting confessions from prisoners by painfully compressing the victim's body aiming to elicit omissions of guilt. The design of the scavenger's daughter consisted of a metal rack shaped like an A-frame. The victim's head would be tightly secured to the top point of the A while the hands were bound at the middle point and the legs at the lower spread end. The unique feature of this device was its ability to fold, causing the head to swing downward and forcing the knees upward, thereby compressing the body. This compression would result in the expulsion of blood from the nose and ears, causing excruciating agony. In 1581, authorities employed the scavenger's daughter to torture Thomas Miach, an Irishman accused of having connections to rebel groups in Ireland. During his ordeal, Miak purportedly etched the following words, through strange torture, they tested my truth while denying my freedoms. 1581, Thomas Miak. Onto the wall of the Beauchamp Tower in the Tower of London. Another victim of the scavenger's daughter was Thomas Cottam, an English Catholic priest from Lancashire, who suffered this torture twice in the 1580s before eventually being released. However, he would meet his end in 1582 during the reign of King Henry VIII's daughter, Elizabeth I. The Pair of Anguish Throughout the Spanish Inquisition era, accusations of witchcraft and heresy were rampant. During this period, a harrowing and grim device known as the Pair of Anguish was devised. 
This particular device, also called the choke pair or mouth pair, took on the shape of a metal pair with segments resembling spoons. Ingenuously designed, it would be inserted into various bodily openings such as the mouth, rectum, or vagina to torture the individual. It could then be spread apart through the power of a spring or a key to inflict unspeakable suffering upon its hapless victims. With its sharp prongs, it held the potential to tear through delicate tissues causing severe injuries that could even lead to death. Women were accused of witchcraft and heresy crimes, and others found themselves at the mercy of this brutal device. The pair of anguish was employed to extract confessions from those suspected of inducing miscarriages, lying, blasphemy, or engaging in homosexuality. The unfortunate women who admitted to their alleged transgressions would often face the grim fate of death by burning at the stake while enduring the agonizing torments inflicted by the pair of anguish within the dungeon walls of ancient castles. However, their earliest mention of the pair of anguish can be traced back to F. de Calvi's book, Le Vantage General de Histoire de Laurens, translated as General Inventory of the History of Thieves, published in 1639. In this intriguing work, he attributed the invention of the pair of anguish to a notorious robber named Capitaine Gaucheau de Paoli. As the story goes, this cunning thief devised a mechanical gag to subdue a wealthy Parisian victim. At the same time, he and his fellow criminals carried out a daring robbery. The Breast Ripper Deep into the dark ages of history, another device existed. This horrifying instrument was known as the Breast Ripper. This merciless device, etched from iron, held a chilling purpose that would send shivers down the spines of women accused by male inquisitors. The designers deliberately created a nightmare-inspired form for the Breast Ripper, showcasing a twisted manifestation of cruelty and explicitly crafted it to forcefully tear away a woman's breasts. Amidst excruciating torment, the tormentors would heat the claws of the Breast Ripper intensifying the agony experienced by the victim. They would apply the four cruel claws to each breast with meticulous precision. The sharp edges of these claws were expertly honed to maximize suffering, mercilessly tearing into the delicate flesh and causing irreversible damage. The result was an overwhelming catalysm of pain that inflicted permanent scars and haunting disfigurement. So, what are your thoughts on this punishment? Let us know in the comments section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and amazing stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.